All right, everybody, welcome to Off Your Rocker, a Senior View podcast. I'm Melissa Smith. I'm here with my cohort, Billy Daniels, and uh, we are the co-host of Off Your Rocker, a Senior View podcast. How's it going, Billy? Fantastic. Fantastic. It's a great, what is it, Tuesday? It's Tuesday. It feels like a Monday. Yeah, it's after President's Day. Right. Did you have a good long weekend? I I did. Did you work? I, I, I did. I figured you did. Yeah. yeah. It's kind I of did what I too. Do. Kind of what I do. We can't get away from it. I know. Yeah. So Truly. we're talking about staffing, mm-hmm. right? We are. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the biggest issues that we see with all the senior living communities that we work with is that turnover is very, very high, and people are leaving for probably not a large very amount much. of money. Mm-hmm. You know, twenty five, fifty cents. And so, what we kind of wanted to talk about today is you know, the importance of getting to those applicants fast, mm-hmm. which is something that we do here at Senior View and we're very proud of and we're, we're kind of piloting it with a, a client right now, but we're getting ready to release it uh, more formally. And uh, we have a, a special guest here. We to, do. Yeah. You know, we really like learning from other industries. We like to bring in people from the out, outside of senior living because they've had experiences that perhaps we haven't had in senior living. And we genuinely want to learn with that, learn from that. So we've invited the chief talent officer of supplemental health care to join us today. Welcome to Off Your Rocker, Mary Lucas. How are you? I'm great. Thanks, <laughs> Billy and Melissa for having me. We're well, so happy you're here. So do you like our name, Off Your Rocker? Yeah, actually, I was just laughing at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that, it. that describes you really well. It does. Melissa. I've known yeah. yeah. Melissa for a long time, Billy. And yeah. I, I'm just, I've always thought she was Off Your Rocker, but at <laughs> totally. I think this now is I like, am. No, yeah, yeah. I really perfect. am. Every single day with Billy. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's awesome. Well, it's I'm awesome. lucky to have a co-host like Felissa because I, f- I feel like we feed off of each other very, very well. We and do. I'm just trying to follow in her footsteps. So I w- hope I get to be off my rocker at some point. <laughs> I'm just learning. I'm I learning. Have, I don't know you as well, but I have the <laughs> feeling that you might be. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. So that's awesome. Well, t- talk about your uh, background and, and what you've done to get to where you are and just sure. elaborate on that. Why why are we having you on this podcast? Because um, you're an expert, obviously. Well, I, I have been in... Uh, talk- I'm a senior now as well, so I'm <laughs> off my record. I'm a senior, so. <laughs> but when I look at, um, I will celebrate 40 years of working in wow, the staffing wow. industry this year. I graduated from um, university in 1980, so it'll be 40 years. My first job was a recruiter, um, and I was started um, finding people, work and companies, people all those years ago, and I still love it. And it's um, it's been my life's work, really. It's um, crazy. That's so awesome. So I am now as chief talent officer for supplemental health care. Um, our team is really responsible in the healthcare space. It's mm-hmm. so challenging right now yeah. to find talent. Mm-hmm. And so our, our role is to help find the talent that works um, for our um, client facilities and different, um, and we do tons of work in schools as well. Mm-hmm. So um, a lot of RNs, PTs, OTs, SLPs, really in, in the healthcare space, our specialty is really finding that right role and the and matching our clients with with the healthcare professionals we place. Yeah. So you're probably facing the same huge challenge that folks are in senior living, and sure. that is the unemployment rate is really low. Great mm-hmm. for the people, not so great for the companies trying to hire people, yeah. right? Well, honestly, um, I, and, I, and I brought a few uh, examples of some, um, I think, hiring stats that are mm-hmm. interesting. Because when you, at, when you both asked me to join you today, I was thinking, like your clients and like the people that you work with, we're faced with the same thing in terms of some market trends. And you can clearly see that basically we're at full employment. And when you look at, um, you know, whatever the discipline is, whatever ever the specialty is, I mean, when you're looking at hiring in the healthcare space, I don't think we've seen a challenge like this, certainly in my 40 years. Wow. That's, that's quite like what we're experiencing now in terms of the, the, unemployment rates being so low Mm -hmm. and the talent out there being so precious. And so the next slide really talks to the fact that, you know, going out and finding people is more challenging. And again, a lot of your clients, I'm sure experience the same thing where, you know, you, you, we call it post and pray, you know, you put a post out there and then you pray that somebody's going to respond. And, um, this kind of puts some color around the fact that the apply rates, you post a job and, or a position. And, you know, when you look at this with healthcare, your apply rates are the lowest of any look at, as you look at the, at, at, any hiring across all industries, healthcare is the lowest for apply rates. And yet, 
it's also the highest, which, you know, makes sense right after transportation. We all know it's hard to find truck drivers, but transportation second is healthcare in terms of the cost per click. Wow. So recruitment marketing right now, I think when you look at the un- com- combination of this perfect storm of unemployment rates so low and um, the people basically full employment, you have to really do something special to make sure that if you do have that precious talent that's coming to you, that you make that talent experience the best it could possibly be when you're Mm -hmm. trying to attract them versus someone else. Billy, you said it earlier, people make changes now for a quarter. Because yeah. they can. Yeah. I mean, and, and you are you are so confident as a job seeker mm-hmm. right now, if you're a healthcare professional, that you can make a change for the, the smallest of things. Yeah. And, and, you know, where people stay or they don't look constantly, I, uh, if, if, you know, they're concerned about will they find something else, there's no question they're going to find gonna something find, else. Yeah. And I yeah. think it's interesting. I, I think back to, you know, in my previous jobs and stuff like that, that it they're probably not leaving for the money. Like we're saying the quarter or the 50 cents, they're leaving because they're not happy. And and I think you alluded to it earlier when we were just kind of ch- chit-chatting before we started recording is you have to separate yourself from the herd mm-hmm. of who you are, who's your identity as a company mm-hmm. and the culture that you have within. And I think that's where I think some companies are missing the boat big time. Before, so. before mm-hmm. we go there, because mm-hmm. I want to hear that too, but I yeah. think it's important to consider the cost Mm. to our client communities right. when they do this so that they will maybe listen a little bit more about all those things they need to be doing right. to keep the people in place. But it's it's costly when mm. they, I mean, I think what our estimates in senior living is somewhere between $3,500 and $5,000 every time somebody leaves a position. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. oh the cost mm. of turnover is incredible. Yeah. I, I will, though, add to what Billy said, though, I think, his comment and observation that people leave for more than just money, they leave because of the environment, you're setting the tone of what kind of environment your culture your, right. the, your culture is when you bring new people in. Mm-hmm. Even even the people who are with you, they're watching. Yeah. And, and the expectations are set with the people you're bringing on board based on how you treat them. Yeah. So, you know, responsiveness, caring, um, you know, the speed is so important right now yeah. and in terms of all of those things that you showcase as you're hiring someone and bringing someone new into the organization um all of those things are the same things that people are going to expect from the culture and that's why mm-hmm. they stay yeah you do you respond to me is there great communication uh, are you in a yeah. position where you are making sure that you make your commitments yep. do you do you follow up on your promises um is it very clear that this is a place that i think i could fit in and, and it's beyond beyond what i'm contributing each day to the work i'm doing and to the care i'm providing it's right. also about you know is the company caring for me? Yeah. Can I, am, am I being heard? Mm-hmm. I think that that is, do I have a voice? Do I feel right. valued? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's huge. And, mm. and I, again, I, I, again, I, I'm, I'm not as much a data junkie as some of the people I work <laughs> with. I have, I have someone who reports directly to me who's like always pulling up the data to showcase, um, you know, here's reasons why we need to behave the way we mm-hmm. behave. Um, I kind of start from the heart and it's really neat that now I have all this data that supports that, you know, showcasing who you are and mm-hmm. the culture and your authentic self and being someone that someone wants to work with and work right. for is also showcasing that this is good for business. And so one of the next slides is is really the whole demand piece that mm-hmm. supports and again validates why do you need to care? I mean, right. why do you need to make sure that, you know, this all these oh, the shortage itself is like this is people have choices of where they're going to work. Mm-hmm. And so the supply with the demand out, outpacing that, you need to be the employer of choice. Right. You need to be the environment where they say, I, I want to go work there. And, and again, one of the great things that we talked about earlier is that it's just so hard playing that game for waiting for an active job seeker to come to you. Right. Um, 
the best bet you're going to have is getting that referral base because you have now become an employer that does all the things we've talked about before. Mm-hmm. You really are someone who puts, you know, either by your example, you really are someone who um, creates an environment where people want to come to work for you and yeah. then they'll refer others. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, you know, our communities, the struggle that they have, and I, don't, I know it's similar in healthcare and in the area that you're in, they are often really strapped yeah. already. Mm-hmm. Financially, they're strapped with the number of people that they have uh, working there. They are wearing many different hats in their communities. And to sit by the phone or to sit by the computer, even when they put a post out that says we're filling a position, mm-hmm. that's just not real. I mean, and it's not their fault. It's just that's the nature of, and it's not to say their place is a bad place to work or it's a place that people wouldn't want to work right. there because oh, the culture good. is great, but it's just, they don't have the yeah. ability to just let me sit here and wait for somebody to call in. <laughs> so right. t- number one there, you're never going to be there at the time they call in. If you don't, I mean, you are in the business of caring, right? You need right. to be caring. Right. Yeah. And right. that's the kind of environment where people want to walk to you finding strategic partners that support what it is you're trying to accomplish Mm -hmm. is imperative Mm -hmm. because this, you know, as you build your tech stack or your support stack and you look at who is going to help me get to what I'm trying to accomplish. So if you go to what am I trying to accomplish, I'm trying to accomplish speed. If, if I do have someone come to me, I'm trying to accomplish the fact that I get to them quickly and I can be defined as whoever my partner is or whoever I'm having, um, you know, what, whatever, wherever I'm outsourcing that, if that's the case, or I just have to make sure that um, in my life, we always talk about who do you send the thank you note to? Mm-hmm. So it's like, if you don't know who you send the thank you note to when something goes well, then it's not going to go well right. <laughs> because too many people are responsible. So you're yeah. responsible for caring for the, our, our, the, the, people that we care for is what you're responsible for making sure that you make those hires. You're responsible. You know, there's so many things in your list, but if you say a number one priority for us is when we are going, we're going to create an experience mm-hmm. for our job seekers and we're going to create an experience that is going to set the tone for the culture they're going to join. Then who do I partner with to make sure that all these components of creating the best hiring process, I, what's my online presence? Mm-hmm. How, what's my speed to respond when someone does come to us? How do I make sure that I have created a process that clearly defines how long it's going to be before you get to hire? Because it's not just getting to them and creating, I want to make sure that you know we want you. This is what it's going to look like for you to join our organization. This is how long it's going to take. These are my commitments to you. These are the milestone moments. What's the best way for me to communicate with you and Mm -hmm. keep that promise? Mm -hmm. Is it, is it, am I texting you? Am I emailing you? Am I calling you between the hours of, because you're already employed and you're seven to seven. Am I supposed to call you at eight o'clock? And all of those things are things that, once you set the process up and create partners that can make, you know, respond, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of ways to, we, we use a lot of AI in terms of, Mm -hmm. we have our chat that we've supported. We have our, we have a company that we work with. It takes care of response time. Um, we have an after hours group. Um, I think, those are all things you have to look and say, who is going to help me accomplish what I want to accomplish? Right, my goals. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think funny, that's a, funny. She should say that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, hmm. but no, I, I mean, I'm, yeah. but I mean, I, I know your remarks are genuine. I just right. say that sarcastically because Why of course that that's what, well, because at Senior View, we've started doing this for our yeah. clients mm-hmm. because there's such an issue within the senior living industry of this very thing right. we're talking about. We already provide support to those senior living communities to answer online ads, Mm -hmm. um, uh, other ads that we may help them produce or whatever, Mm -hmm. bringing their prospects or their future residents to us to answer and and connect with them and develop a relationship. Mm -hmm. So if someone is coming and saying, I might be interested in learning more about this facility for my mother or my father, uh, you guys take care of it. We do that. So we have a contact center that does that. But now we just piloted, what, maybe nine months ago for about a six-month period with one of our client communities Mm -hmm. doing what we call speed to applicant. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the right terminology is, but it's basically us. Response time. Yeah, response time. It's us responding to them and it was a huge success. So clearly our gut was right that, you know, we, we can also provide that particular service 
Um, and I'm sure there's other contact centers that can provide that service too. Yeah. But what I what I hear you saying is that, yeah, number one, that's important. You better get to them. Absolutely. But it's all these other little things that I think are so important, like asking them about their communication preference. What else like that, Mary, do we need to be thinking about when we're out here answering calls for our client communities that can help bond that connection quicker, faster, all of that to be a success. Mm-hmm. It's well, it's funny you should ask because I begin back to I have a team that's called the Care Center. So they're twenty four seven and they're in place. They're you call it a contact center, but I have a team that reports directly into me. It's one of the most important things we can do. Mm-hmm. And again, our uh, supplement health care, we basically say worry less, care more. Our entire um, kind of how we describe what we do is we help our clients worry less so that they can care more or we help the job applicant worry less about finding the job so that they can care more do what they do what they do and and so all, everything for us is SHC cares and mm-hmm. so our care center sounds like in, mm-hmm. in almost like what you you've created right we might want to change the name of our <laughs> center <laughs> anyway uh, but, note to self but here here are some of the reasons why we put this group into place and so we have the care agents, and if you, again, it's, it's following perfectly some mm-hmm. of the state of the market, the stats. Why would we do something like this? Right. Um, because sixty nine percent of job seekers say that employee response time is the number one thing that needs to improve. <laughs> so we're trying to get ourselves under that five minute mark in terms of response time. Right. So whoop, if whoop. you know, Sounds so familiar. we're yeah. looking yeah. at one of the metrics we're looking at is every single candidate that comes into us is that are we, you know, and and so my team, um, the after hours team specifically, will share we were two point seven minutes. You know, so if someone is an active job seeker again. Mm-hmm. I'm going to look at active job seeker, not by just someone who has responded to a posting, but did we run a social media campaign? Is there a Facebook campaign? Are we doing a reactivation campaign? Or are we doing something where, well, we have someone has sent a referral. We call them brand ambassadors. So um, we have internally a campaign for, you know, inviting people to be brand ambassadors and we work with a company called Staffing Referrals for that because kind of like what you're offering for your clients is the ability to outsource technology and support. And, you know, Mm -hmm. you have, you have, I'll call them your care agents. I'm not sure what they're called, but you have those people that that's all they're doing is responding and being measured by their response time. Right, absolutely. So that, that was one of the, this is one of the data points. And when you look at the stats that we looked at, we need to have a group that helps us address that because our recruiters that are sitting at the desk every day, they're mm-hmm. finding someone, they're, they're submitting to this uh, cute facility for someone or that this school, we're trying to get this, our, this school nurse placed or an OT, a PT, whatever. They're doing that. And so they're not sitting at their phone every day waiting either. And so when you ask specifically, that that is response time when you are lucky enough to have an active job seeker or someone who's interested in you they're so precious hopefully every other data point i shared shows you Mm -hmm. they're not very many so you better take care of them i think the second piece of it when you said what do you do is you've got to lay out what your map roadmap is you've got Mm -hmm. to say what you can expect from us and i think the first most important thing you do is what are you get to know them your process has to be your care agents have to say we're so happy you mm-hmm. connected with us. You're in the right place. We're going to take good care of you. Let's talk about what that's going to look like. And before we do, tell me what you want. You, uh, you were, we're lucky enough you called us. What are you looking for? Mm-hmm. And start with where they are. Now, we might get, and again, you know all this because you run a care center like this, but making sure that now, now, I'm going to get into some specifics about what this is going to look like. But before I do, what's the best way to communicate with you? Yep. Some yep. people love text. You're, what are you working right now? You're 7 to 7 now. Is it 8 p.m.? Is that the best time? What's the best? Um, in, and do you like email? Not. Do you want? Don't. Li- you know, so many people, especially right now, the more you work with the millennials, do not leave me a voicemail. I'm never going to listen to it. <laughs> I mean, like, right. if you don't text me, I'm yeah, not talking right. yeah. to you. So right. I, I know this by having these, you know, it's children that are this way too. That's the only way you communicate. 
but setting the expectations up at the very beginning and then I think really then once you've gotten to the point where we've agreed these are all the things that we know best way to communicate you with you we've got and I think at this connection that you're making this connection then Mm -hmm. starts to serve um I'm trusting you now tell me um why I should trust in the process and this trusting in that process means that you have to communicate the process. So again, one of the other stats is you better hire mm-hmm. them within 10 days. You better make sure that you, if 73% of job seekers say it's one of the most stressful events in my life, how are you coming across as the calm in the storm? You get yeah. back at, you're in the right place. You made the right decision. I'm going to be here with you. And even if you're, you know, you're passing them on, you've explained why you're passing them on, what they can expect, how quickly they'll get a phone call. And warm transfers, if possible, are great. Mm. Mm-hmm. But I think there's also this, this is setting up a, here's when someone's going to talk to you. And so for, I would say for your clients, a strong suggestion is that you have access to their calendars. You've set that appointment for them right then. You They know when there is an expectation that they connect and follow up and they can plan around this. So now how great would it be? And again, this is what happens in our world. You wait, you come in the morning, someone else has been working overnight and you know that I have three active job seekers that I'm connecting with and they're, I left my calendar open for nine and 10 and mm-hmm. 11 and they're set for me. So I think that's part of it as well. Um, uh, you know, some of the other stats I put on here, I think all, all support everything we're talking about, you know, just, Eighty-three percent of candidates say it would greatly improve the overall experience if you had a clear timeline of the hiring process, yeah. which is what I just talked about. Yeah. Um, here's here's a thought. I mean, again, I don't know anybody who's it. much better on yeah, video, yeah, but yeah. if you can't, if if you can, like our YouTube channel will have different examples of of why a supplemental health care, you know, right. if you can use a video to help talk about your culture, who you are, you know, even mm-hmm. if it's just a click and you've got their attention really quickly at the beginning, this is, let me tell, let me, let me tell you more about our organization, which whoever your client companies are, you could do the same with them and help them put that video. Mm-hmm. Here's, here's my story. Um, and then, um, I think that, the, the branding piece of it here, I never really thought about this until I actually um, went to supplemental mm. health care and I looked at, um, I, I will say that our glass door rating when I started was a 2.1 and now <laughs> we're a 4.1. And so Ooh, congratulations, not, yeah. not because of me. I will say though, it's, it was because of really looking at helping balance the stories because mm-hmm. right now, if you haven't, if you're listening and you are a facility that's looking again to you. You're already here because you're working with senior view and, and, I, but I think go Google yourself and look at what yeah. pops up because yeah. managing your online presence is imperative because people will say they will not go to work for a company if that you can have a great interaction with someone from your care center. But if they go Google and all they see is mm-hmm. what the negative reviews are, you know, haters are going to hate. So you got to balance that. Yeah. So yeah. you have to figure out how to make sure you create an online presence that showcases the positive aspects and the culture of your organization that will help entice people to want to mm. be a part of your organization. Well, and and well, I Go think ahead. we should talk about that, Billy, because mm-hmm. that's one of the things that I know Billy's team works really closely with our client communities on, and mm. that is the importance of the reviews yeah. and staying on top of them, but even allowing them, but giving, yeah. giving the the consumers or the families a place for their voice yeah, to be heard and, and to be heard because I think in those a lot of communities they're like kind of like la 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 I don't yeah. want to hear that I don't want to know the bad things I don't want to know and so I yeah. don't know if you well, have any thoughts around that well I think I think and Mary may disagree with me which is this the beauty of this podcast but I think there's it's not not a bad review or a, bla- a bad somebody going on there and blasting your company. It doesn't have to come across bad. People are smart enough to figure out and read between the lines that, that this person was really upset about something that really didn't pertain to their work environment at all or the company at all. And having that up there, yes, is not great, but it also is an area that you can go out there and... I. Glassdoor I struggle with, but like uh, the the online reviews of a, of a community, you can go out there and correct the situation online you can, and you can do you that can do on Glassdoor. You can do the Glassdoor. same thing yeah. on Glassdoor though. On mm-hmm. every, we, we respond to 
every single I, negative review. Yeah. And every single negative review, you say, I'm sorry you feel yep. this way. Yeah. People read behind, the, they know. Again, yeah. Back to <laughs> Taylor Swift, a hater's going to hate. People can <laughs> see that this person had a bad day or they're on a witch hunt or they're doing something. They can say, yeah. Your response is that this is not who we are, right. and we. And back to um, my team, I have a, I have a, the direct report who is actually our, um, she's our talent and director of talent engagement, and I can't tell you how many times we have taken someone who had a, a bad moment or situation, and then then said to them again. A lot of times they're anonymous, but if mm-hmm. you say our director of talent engagement is ready and willing to talk to you about your yeah. experience, we want to hear you. Yeah. Her situation, then talking with her, what's here's how you connect with her. We're fully transparent. This right. is how you connect. I think it doesn't just say that we are um, acknowledging that you had a bad experience with that individual. Mm-hmm. What it's saying to anyone who looks at that review in the future, wow, they're on it. Yeah. You know, they yeah. are, totally. they are Absolutely. completely. Yeah. So, Every single negative review, how you respond, yep. being like, we'll talk more about it. And there's sometimes that, honestly, I mean, we can't do anything about it. Right, I mean, they're, right. they're, they're, they they were not allowed back to that particular facility for reasons that were, right. you know, very warranted. And yeah. yet they didn't show that on the glass door right. review. Yeah. But, yeah. but we have at least had the experience of letting people feel heard mm-hmm. and showcasing that we do care yeah absolutely and, and i think that's what it is is it just allow them to be heard and then and then respond acknowledge but i think it goes what i hear you saying is uh again set the expectation you know and that's what you're doing by responding back to those to right. the negative reviews is yeah hey we're here to to listen and talk through this and, and learn and, if and help be, yeah right and, and i can say one of the biggest things that that i did in in my career involvement was uh, and you talked about uh, the seventy three percent of job seekers say that this process of looking for a job is terrible and, and it's not fun. And the th- the thing that I can remember the most uh, that someone told me is I went through a career advisor because I just was I wasn't struggling or anything like that, but I just mm-hmm. I wanted to be a better version of myself. And he looked at me and he goes, "Billy, no one is good at this. It is really hard." to get your resume together. It is really hard to go through these interview processes. And it just, when you put that stat up there, that's all I could think about was just like, okay, it is true. Like it's terrible. It's not fun. But I think what you are bringing to the table, Mary, is you're saying communicate upfront, tell them what the process is going to be. That was my biggest thing with any interview I ever went through was why do I have to come back to your facility five times for two hours every time? Like, I do have a job that I'm still working at right. and I really don't want them to, you know, telling them I have a doctor's appointment five times. They start to go, well, are you okay? <laughs> you, <know? laughs> yeah. and you can only come up with so many excuses. And I think that that's where, uh, you know, I've gone through some other companies that have done a great job of saying, Hey, we're going to have you come in. You're going to interview with one, two, three, four people. It is going to take half a day and then we're probably going to bring you back. And that'll be at least one or two weeks later. Uh, and then the communication through that entire time was spot on. And I think that that is what we're trying to do as senior view. But what I'm hearing from you is just communicate and, and, and tell them what's going to happen. And, and I think I think you have to do the heavy lifting at the beginning to yeah. figure out what you're going to communicate there. Yeah. You're and right. I think what happens is, back to Valissa's point, mm-hmm. is that you're doing so many other things and you're really good at caring for your patients or your clients or right. you know, the, your residents. residents. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, that's what you're good at. And so you don't sometimes take the time to plan. And what, that's that phrase, if you fail to plan... You plan to fail. Yeah. Uh, you know, I yeah. think it's it's taking the time to say, here's what our process is, knowing that these are the most important priorities for yeah. us. You start with that page that says, what do we want our um, job seeker to experience? We want speed to response. We mm-hmm. want to create this environment where they feel like they're joining a great culture even right. before they joined because they might be able to refer someone if they don't even take the job. Exactly. We want to create a streamlined process. We want to make sure that it's no more 10 from 10 days from with a minute when we talk to them to this. So you set your KPIs. What are the key performance indicators of, of what the process is that we're going to mm-hmm. build? Then you say, who can help us get there? And, and like you can do a piece of it and maybe maybe after this conversation you guys want to do more of it too because honestly right you can help a manager social absolutely presence. I mean, yeah, yeah. You, absolutely you, if you don't have somebody to send the thank you note to who's making sure i was thinking about 
your clients and I was thinking about, they're going to go, really? You want me to respond to every <laughs> single one yes. of the, yeah, yeah. And maybe you aren't, but you have someone who's a partner. representing mm-hmm. you and a partner. Um, so the, that list of the things that have to get done. And then you say, that's the process and I've defined it. And who's going to help me make sure that I accomplish these things. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then I watch the money come in because I'm faster to hire. Right. And I'm going to tell you one of the byproducts of this though is, you set the tone for how you behave when someone comes new in the door and people that are there see that that becomes the culture of communication, the Mm -hmm. culture of caring, the culture of making sure you're responsive and all of those things create um, a better play environment for retention too. Yeah. It's just amazes me that everything that you're talking about. And, and one of the things I think that uh, I keep going back to again is just is I hear you saying, what do we want our uh, employees to, or what, what do we want the expectation for them? And I think people have a hard time, maybe they could transition and say, how would I want to be treated? Yeah. You know, and, and, I, and it's easy to say that, but we all struggle with it. And, and I think that that's where, if I were interviewing, if I were doing these things, how would I, but, but the handwritten note, I keep thinking that that is such a memorable <laughs> moment that someone, even if they didn't even go through the process of getting hired or, or even interviewing, they're going to walk over to their friend and go, you should go interview over there. I got a handwritten note from the the ED, the executive director, and they just thanked me for my time. And that I think that they're probably a really good company to go work for. Well, you know? hey, I'm going I'm to share one that's, and I, I, I have always been the advocate of a handwritten note, and I always think that it's valuable in this, in this world of selfies, though, and depending <laughs> on who you're getting um, in for the interview, if you, had, if you don't have it, download the app Touch Note, and someone came in to interview, and you do a <laughs> selfie with them with senior view in the background, right. and you, you send them a postcard then put on the other side of it, and it's one of my favorite, <laughs> I talk about comeback sauce moments all the time, yeah. and you want to create, what's going what's gonna to have someone think about our... our our experience, our connection with a smile. Mm-hmm. And um, I even did that with Melissa recently <laughs> where she was over and I sent her a picture of Daisy, your dog. And it was like, <laughs> I think what is going to touch yeah. that person and right. their experience? And it's so I think there's, there's different ways to create that exact moment. Mm-hmm. Handwritten, absolutely. Yeah. Other ways that are super easy when you and just fast. The, you touch know, note fast. is fast to do. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, you know, Back to building in my process, building in my process that there's a handwritten note follow right. up or building right. in my process that there's some kind of memorable um, uh, four days out when they might be saying, hey, I'm, I'm getting anxious here mm-hmm. um, and all of those things. And I, I'm not going to underestimate, Billy, what you said earlier about if we keep doing things on our terms Mm -hmm. in an environment where someone can leave for 25 cents more and someone gets to them faster and it's come back again and come back again and come back again. And you haven't really thought about, well, how many times am I coming back? And you haven't said, this is when the decision will be made. Um, creating that process where you, you get all four done on the same day yeah. and you slow down long enough right. to say, let's debrief and mm-hmm. let's make our commitment of 10 days from I'm interested I, yeah. to, I think those are, those are all part of that, but you also build into those touch note moments yeah. or those moments yeah. where you do a handwritten note and that's built in the process. It's uh, unbelievable. Mary, mm-hmm. one of the things that we run into a lot, particularly with prospects, people who have not joined uh, or partnered with senior view is that one of their hesitations residencies is trusting somebody else to represent them. Mm -hmm. And I think in particular, when it comes to, because they're, they're so good at giving the care in the communities that they feel like, oh no, 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 I'm going to be the best one to tell you or to tell them, you know, why they should come to our community or I'm going to be the best. And it's, and so we sometimes struggle with new communities coming on board because that is sort of a roadblock in their minds that nobody can sell it like they can. So Any thoughts? I, yeah. Yeah, that was um, a great, I had the same question. That was great. So yeah. my, well, again, I go long, I, I go a way back with Felissa and you're one of the best interviewers I've ever met. And <laughs> I, ca- I call it, Felissa should write a book called Interview, I N N E R. V-I-E-W, uh, interview. It's in the works, Mary. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you've been bugging yeah. me for years. But, it's yeah. in the works. But my point <laughs> of this is, is he, he, Billy can do this. Melissa can do it. I yeah. can do it. This is, this is so 
a fresh set of eyes looking at your story and sharing your story in some ways can be the most valuable thing gift you give yourself because sometimes I forget how cool I am <laughs> and, and I, I forget how awesome I am and someone pointing it out to me it makes right. it like so yeah. so asking the questions of bringing out the best of someone and just doing okay Here's what I hear you saying. You're worried that we don't know you well enough to represent you. So help me with that. Yeah. What makes you special? What about this environment are you most proud of? Um, if you haven't Googled appreciative inquiry questions, you take the entire the entire interview is all around the appreciative inquiry questions that and now I'm having someone outside of myself and my team help me tell our story and then it comes back to defining the process if you fail to plan you plan to fail yeah. so you, then your team has now the upfront part of the process of bringing on a new client for you guys you're nodding because you probably already do this but <laughs> but that it's I I am going to do a better job of telling your story than you right. are because you're too close to right. it. Yeah. And you just had right. that negative thing happen with one of your residents and you you're that's so in your head about what that just you forgot to see the big picture about everything mm -hmm. you're doing. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. For yeah. the families that you mm -hmm. are. So here's the story. I'm going to bring you back to what's so fantastic about this environment, this place that um, I'm going to, I'm going to help you tell your story better than you can tell your own story. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> yeah. It. But yeah. it's true. I mean, and that is one of the biggest obstacles I think we run into. Yeah. Yeah. Totally and then agree. they get here and then they're like, Oh, I, I get, get it. it. And you know, and we work with them also because every community has their, some of them have a different language. Like we have one group of communities oh, yeah. that they're not called communities. They're right. called branches. And right. so things like that, so that we have to learn their language. But that's what's so great about our technology. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's great that you can learn their language. But I think it's also you got to be tough enough with them to say, what's going to help me best tell your story? Yeah. Because your language right. can get in your right. way. Mm -hmm. And so these yeah. so many times people are talking that, well, this is this is how we, we do we it. We reference mm -hmm. our, this is how we are. We're so special because everyone. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody's so special. <laughs> Their stuff is so much better than special. And it's like, have you thought about you're the listener? Yeah. Have you thought yeah. about the emotion you're trying to evoke from someone who's right. making a decision for their mom? Mm -hmm. And so right. they don't want to hear branches. You know, right. We yeah. don't, right. we've got 24 branches and they, one of them might be right for your mom. Well, no, <laughs> I don't want to. That's it, not kind of the reminds story. me of banking yes. in a way. I mean, yeah. the word to the me does. The story I want to help you share is what's going to evoke the kind of um, emotion that you, um, you know, that this is a place a and home. this is community. Is and this, this is their home. home. Yes. Yeah. So your internal language should have nothing to do. Good point. With the yeah. language you share, and that's where again a fresh set of eyes and and figuring out who your strategic partners are that will help you tell your story, that will help you accomplish all the things you have on your list mm -hmm. that are important for you to do. That was, that was one of our points too on, uh, increasing website conversions is the copy that maybe you've written about mm -hmm. your, your company yes. isn't telling the best story about who you are. And I, I think it was very interesting to hear you say that just now, because I agree is, is copy written from headquarters on, well, this is what we do. This is who we are. And this is all you, this is our mission statement and we must use our mission statement. Sometimes it doesn't sell no. the property or, right. or sell the community or sell, well, sell the company. You I probably mean, do this too, but we do, um, I just, I just did another round of it, but we hire Mr. Shoppers that, um, I had four, four, um, healthcare professionals that had never worked for any agency before. And um, they shopped us and some of our major competitors. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we interviewed them and said what was good, what was bad. It's right. hard to hear some things that they yeah. wanted to share about, um, you know, I mean, a mobile optimization is big for us right now. That was one of the big takeaways for us is that we've got to make sure that our ease of that um, c career side and that process to, um, to apply with us. That was one of the things that we're continuing to work on. Um, and yet you know, the wording and, and what, what kind of feel do you have? What right. kind of impression do you have? Right. What kind of, that's where outsiders helping you look at yeah. holding the mirror up Cause, is, cause is the, so helpful. The prospect or, or whoever is looking at it going, do I see myself in this mm -hmm. company? And if it's something that, you know, is not great looking, they, they're going to have a hard time seeing themselves at that company. Yeah. And that, that's a great point. 
I know we've gone, we've talked a lot, but I think one thing that I really want us to touch on a little bit more Mm -hmm. um, before we hang it up here for today is that around social media. We talked a little bit about that before we started recording, Mary, and the typical just popping on and saying, hi, from our community is not enough. Is that correct? Because you're saying that these applicants are going there to see what your culture is like. So it's not, it's not just about, um, in our case, it's not just about the the seniors and their families. Right. It's about those people who are applying for jobs to come right. work with um, those at those communities. Yep. So I think again back to what am I trying to accomplish with my online presence, and what what is the most beneficial for my organization? And if it's you know it's different by different channels, um, you know being a for, for uh, I'll use us as an example, and then and then I think your the companies you work with or the facilities you work communities with, communities, communities you yeah. work with mm-hmm. can decide. Um, but communities is a great word because creating a community yeah. and, and being a resource and being a you know for us one of the big things that we wanted to do with our Instagram page, for example, and you know again we're learning as we go because all all of this social changes dramatically, oh, yeah. yet. Um, if you would just go out and, and at SHC Cares, if you if you want to use an example, um, our Instagram account, initially it was, it's Valentine's Day, happy Valentine's Day. Or it was, um, you know, happy holidays to you. Or, you know, it was, or you know, something that was like, uh, we have, you know, we're out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, what we really thought when we looked at it is, and we just, our big thing now is to say, we're a cool place to work. How do we showcase that? Right. So if it's, for example, um, a recent example is examples of our people that were, um, when we, it was Red Friday, because, you know, for the Heart Association, who's wearing red and who's it for? You know, in October, it's pink. Who's it for? Um, when showcasing our people when they're volunteering at the Ronald McDonald House right. over the holidays, um, having our travel nurses showcase, I'm at Niagara Falls today. Thanks, SHC, for sending me. So cr- getting people engaged, involved in sharing and using all the hashtags we can possibly use for then if you're hashtag travel nurse. If you are looking at travel nurse, you supplement health care right. pops up. So <laughs> if you think about how you're working with social to showcase examples that we're a cool place to be, this is a culture where you 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 want to be a part of this. We we truly are super fun, as you can probably tell. Um, but <laughs> totally. I mean, I think. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, I think the um, the giving back, the showcasing all that. That's what we do with our Instagram. Um, with with. LinkedIn, it, it's different because we are now more of a, here's tips you need to know when you interview. Here are, um, and our Facebook page is more about a community where, you know, we're talking, we're talking more about, um, you know, you might have one question answered about how to, how do I manage my CEUs? What should I do to update? You know, so we become a resource. Mm-hmm. So different places at social will showcase different things. And here's, you know, a quick, motivational tweet but i think you you look at each channel and you say what is it i'm trying to accomplish with this channel and i think sometimes you also have to say back to your point about i'm just trying to care for the residents that yeah. i have right. in my community right. i'm just trying to be there and this is you she's talking about a lot of things that i need to do and i should be on top of there's resources to help you be mm-hmm. on top of mm-hmm. that and you may say you know twitter's not important to me but you know, you this that is not that's not where I find the p- future residents, or you might say, or employees, employees, right. or or so. I think you have to make that decision. I will say though, managing that online presence, and especially right now with the demographics of how many people are out there, there are a lot of people that are looking for um, work, or they're looking for the place for their mom mm-hmm. um, on Facebook. So creating that environment is is probably really important so what you want from it and managing it and not being stale and being current those are all things that i think either you get help with or that you figure out that this is this is something i'm going to add mm-hmm. you know I, my advice because it can be overwhelming all the things i've just talked about is start with one thing and say this is the thing i'm going to make sure i nail and all of these other things will feed into it. So if it's hiring process, if it's speed to hire, if it's getting making sure that that precious active job seeker is taken care of, and 
and a huge thing I would say if you if you're looking at I I I really want to get better about getting my positions filled quickly I'd also say build your referral base and part of the ways to build your referral base is really looking at creating a culture that people want to refer, refer someone to mm-hmm. so much fantastic so information so mary yeah. lucas chief talent officer of supplemental health care thank you so much thank yeah. you for i mean it, well, yes. I, I feel so grateful that we can tap into our friends and others in other industries that are already tackling a little bit ahead of us um, in terms of what we're doing in the senior living industry. Right. So this is super helpful. Well, yeah. and I used my lunch hour from Supplemental Health Care to be with you guys, so oh. I'd be remiss if I didn't. You should say, what can we do for you? <laughs> well, if any of you listeners know of any healthcare professionals that would like to work um, agency work, we'd love to have them. Oh, um, that's great. That I'm always looking for referrals. Hey. Well, and with the with the unemployment yes. rate yeah. as low as it is right now, we all are for sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. For sure. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks well, to yeah. you also, Billy Daniels. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I was just here. I was observing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were fun, Billy. That was great. <laughs> that was great here. fun. Yeah. And thanks to our listeners, of course. Yeah, thanks to the listeners. And uh, you can find this podcast on all major podcast networks and on SeniorView.com. So thank you. And we'll see you next time on Off Your Rocker. Rock. <laughs> I feel like it. I should be like, yeah. you know, something like that. <laughs> <laughs>